The Shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. government to bring to justice Dr. Fu Manchu, the arch-criminal, and the head of the Black Poppy Society, Special Inspector Nayland Smith and his associate, Dr. James Petrie, arrive at the London home of Sir Crichton Davy. British statesman, too late to save him from his dire kiss, death through the bite of a deadly, poisonous insect. Smith has discovered the object of Dr. Fu's presence in London to be the elimination of outstanding scientists and political leaders of which the Crichton Davy was the first on Fu Manchu's list. Back in their Baker Street quarters, a similar attempt on their lives is frustrated by the quick action of Nayland Smith. Careful, Petrie. I think I've killed it. But even in death, the thing is venomous. Wait, not Nayland. What? What is it? Come here. Look. Don't touch it. Have you ever seen a giant centipede? Look at the size and color of the thing. It's at least six inches long. A vivid and venomous red. Apparently, it's of the Scolopendra group. The shape's absolutely strange to me. It has something of the appearance of a huge ant. Look at these long antenna and numberless legs. Mm hmm. Never seen an insect move so incredibly fast as this thing ran around that scented envelope. What? The man who brought it. That... Never mind the dacoid, Petrie. Nemesis will know where to find him. We at least know now what causes the mark of the Zayat kiss. It's definitely placed. Aye. Science is richer for our first brush with the enemy. Hmm. I understand now something that's been puzzling me since Burgoyne mentioned it. Sir Crichton's stifled cry, the red hand. When we remember that he was almost past speech, it's reasonable now to suppose his cry was not the red hand, but the red ant. Horrible, Nayland. And to think I failed by less than an hour to save Sir Crichton from such an end. Oh, it's a tough case, Petrie. But I swear to get that murderer sooner or later. Meanwhile, in the great tapestry-hung room of the gloomy old mansion in High Street, the yellow-robed Fu Manchu issues his orders to a trusted henchman. And what do you mean by results, Master? Results, Lal, are what I demand and expect from my servants. Thing has failed me. And your orders, Master? Eliminate Thing at once, in the usual manner. To hear is to obey. And what of the detective? Nayland Smith? Oh. <laughs> it appears that I have underestimated his abilities. Leave him to me, Lal. Presently I shall think of a method whereby we may put both Nayland Smith and his friend Dr. Petrie aside. <laughs> I say, Petrie, when you finish with that paper... Then... Hello? Dr. Petrie? Uh, speaking, Weymouth. What is it? 
I'm calling from the Whopping River Police Station. Could Mr. Smith come down here at once? Uh, just a moment, Weymouth. He's right here. Uh, speak to him yourself. Oh. Hello, Weymouth. What is it? I'd rather not say over the phone, Mr. Smith. But it's important that you come as soon as possible. Bit of a follow-up of last night's case. Right, Weymouth. We'll be down at once. Must be important, Petrie. And if Fu Manchu's at the bottom of it, it's probably something ghastly. Come on, we'll motor down to the station. It'll save time. We'll get a cab at the corner. I'm Nayland Smith. I want to see Inspector Weymouth. Uh, Special Inspector Nayland Smith. Yes, yes. Is Weymouth here? Uh, uh, This way, sir. Right in here. Ah, uh, Mr. Smith, glad you came. And you, Dr. Petrie. Oh, well, and ask Inspector Reimer to step in here. Uh, right on, sir. All right, Weymouth, what is it? Over here, Mr. Smith, on the table. I'll remove the sheet. Why, Joe! Who is it, Weymouth? It's Cadby, Dr. Petrie. The most promising lad at the yard. Disguised, eh? Rough sailor garb. Stained skin, gold ring in one ear. Aye, and look at his left hand. Three fingers missing. It appears as though they'd been chopped off, Weymouth. It was almost the same with Mason. A week ago, he went off in his own time on some funny business down St. George Way. And the following night, Thursday night, the 10 o'clock boat got the grapnel into him off Hanover Hole. His first two fingers on his right hand were clean gone. His left hand was frightfully mutilated. Hmm. Oh, uh, this is Inspector Reimer. Special Inspector Neil and Smith and Dr. Petrie Reimer. How do you do, Inspector? I uh, overheard your remarks, Weymouth, about Gadby's and Mason's mutilated hands. That last show we picked out of the river, both his hands were mutilated in the same manner. Are these things on the table found in Cadby's clothing? Yeah, uh, right, sir. Watch, money, knife. Hmm. What the devil? Chinese pigtail. That's why we sent for you. It appears to be the first clue pointing to the authors of these strange crimes. It's a false one, of course. Attached to a most ingenious bald wig. Yes, we believe it's part of a Chinese makeup. Cadby was clever at disguise. Disguise, yes, but certainly not used by Cadby. Now, look here. Too small by inches for his head. And look how the crown's padded. This thing was made for a most abnormal head. Where did you find him, exactly? Uh, Limehouse Reach on the commercial dock pier, exactly an hour ago. And you last saw him at 8 o'clock last night? That's right. How long has the man been dead, Petrie? Oh, roughly 24 hours. Then we know that he was on the track of the Fu Manchu group, that he followed some clue which led him to the neighborhood of old Ratcliffe Highway. You are sure, Weymouth, that that's where he was going? Yes. He liked to work things out alone. It would have meant a big lift for him if he'd pulled that case off. He left the yard at 8 o'clock to go to his room and rest for the job. Did he keep any record of his cases? Of course, we all do. In that respect, he was particular. You'll want his book. I'll get his address. He almost succeeded where we failed, Petrie. There's no doubt in my mind that he was hot on the track of Fu Manchu. Mason, the other officer, probably blundered on the tent, too, and met with a similar fate. Without other evidence, the fact that they both died in the same way as the Dacoit would be conclusive. For we know that Fu Manchu killed the Dacoit. Exactly. But, Inspector Smith, what is the meaning of the mutilated hands? Oh, heaven knows, Reimer. Cadby's death was caused by drowning, you say? Well, there are no other marks of violence, but he was a strong swimmer. And Mason was like a fish in the water. Here's Cadby's address, number 22, Cold Harbor Lane. You'll find his case book in the cupboard on the sitting room, uh, top shelf, right-hand side. Here's his keys. This is the cupboard key. Thank you. Come on, Petrie. We must move along this time. Yes, yes, of course, Nayland. Good job we kept the cab. Number 22, Cold Harbor Lane Driver, as quickly as you can. Joe, that we're only in time. Fu Manchu is sure to come there. This time, Petrie, we'll... Wait. The pigtail. I forgot it. Stop, driver, stop. We've got to have that pigtail, Petrie. Uh, uh... Don't wait for me. Go to the address and get that book. Come straight out to Scotland Yard and meet me there. Oh, but Neil and I'll wait or we'll go back. A few minutes can make no difference. Do you suppose Fu Manchu's going to leave evidence like that book lying about? It's a thousand to one he has it already, but there is just a bare chance. Go on, driver. Yes, what do you want? I'm Dr. Petrie. I'm sorry to bring bad news regarding your tenant, Mr. Cadby. Bad news, eh? Oh, well, that was to be expected. The company kept. What with that wailing at the back of the house last night, and tonight again, just a moment before you knocked. Wailing? Just now? This police card should let me in. Where's Cadby's room? Uh, uh, first floor, second door to your right. There's a woman in there now. 
Come home. What are you doing in this room? Tell me. So I did get here in time. Oh, Dr. Petrie. What have you taken from that cupboard? Give it to me. Oh, I, I have taken nothing. Oh, Dr. Petrie, you must go at once. You are in terrible danger. Please, please go. Not until you give me what you took from that cupboard. Then you're going with me to the police. I will tell you all I can, all I dare. I know how to deal with your friend. But with you, I, I am lost. If you could only understand, you would let me go. Let you go? You have no claim to mercy. I am not free, as your English women are free. What I do, I, I must do, for it is the will of my master. And I am only a slave. And you, Dr. Petrie, you are not a man that you can give me to the police. You have no heart if you can forget that only last night I tried to save you. You lured Cadby to his death. Oh, no. No, I swear I did not. I spied upon him, yes. But it was because he would not be warned that he met his death. I could not save him. Then save yourself by telling me where I can find Fu Manchu. Oh, I dare not. I dare not. Not if you would go to find him. Your friend, Leland Smith. Yes, I, I would tell him. And he would die. No, oh, that's ridiculous. Come on, tell me. Could you hide me from him if I came to you and told you all I know? Well, uh, the authorities would uh, have... Ah, the authorities. They can put me on the rack if they choose. But not one word would I speak. But to you, I would tell all I know. Very well, then. Speak. Tell me where I can find Fu Men too. Oh, no. No. Not now. Not... Yeah. Good heaven. Ah, oh, Dr. Petrie. I have been waiting for an opportunity to meet you personally. Fu Manchu! No, no, do yes. not reach for your pistol. It would be useless. Take him now, but be careful. Very careful. He must remain alive for the interesting little experiment we shall perform later. <laughs> Thank you.